Hello, good evening, how's everyone doing? Uh, I'm going to start tonight with silver, because everyone's talking about silver and everybody's wondering, is it going to go higher from here? How are we doing in silver? Well, you know, I'm old enough to remember a couple of years ago when there was a great uh, campaign to uh, ruin JP Morgan short in silver and everybody was to buy silver pennies. And it really didn't, like, it went on for ages and, you know, bless them at Zero Hedge, they really tried hard to uh, coordinate it, but it never really came to anything. But um, I think that now social media, and particularly Reddit, could be a bit of a game changer and we could actually see um, Silver doing something, mainly because uh, everybody's so fascinated by what happened at GameStop that they don't want to miss the next one. So whatever they do, everybody's going to pile in. The problem with that and crowded trades is it doesn't always work. So let's take a look at silver and see what the possibilities are. This is a monthly chart of silver. We've got the great double top, the big squeeze of 2011. That really, trust me, that was quite a squeeze. If we could do that again, that would be quite something. But since then, from the lows in the middle, we've retraced to a 786 Fib level. When you retrace to a 786 Fib level and you reverse at one, the 61.8, remember Fib, Fibonacci retraces are like a step ladder. Uh, so this 61.8 was what we had to get back above if we were going to go higher. And if we look left at this monthly chart, we can see that this is also fantastic. Uh, support and resistance in silver all the way back to 08. So above 2117, we were always going to fly in silver. The problem is we've had this spectacular, uh, lovely, really impulsive move. And the question is, have we finished a correction? Because most corrections are three waves. So that would mean that we have a down move and a bounce and then another down move. Sometimes a little bit funky. Sometimes we double top and we carry on. Sometimes we even make a higher one and then we make a lower one. So it looks like we haven't made a correction at all. But in fact, we have made a correction. And usually when you see this, even if this is a little bit higher, uh, this is either 61.8 or equal to the first swing of correction. So we could even make a new high and then do this and then carry on and it would still uh, count. But remember that next swing must should be 61.8 or equal to. So now if we go down to the weekly, I think when we look at this, and I've been saying in my group for some time that silver did make a very nice, perfect ABC correction. So this swing and this swing were equal. So I think we've probably done it. And then we double bottomed at this level. So the likelihood is that, yes, we are actually possibly in the next impulsive wave. The problem is that sometimes in a bigger correction, you know, this is still just A and B. And so we're not entirely out of trouble yet. But it's looking pretty good now that we've got five waves up, isn't it? But we have to bear that in mind that if we come back too fast. So what I'm going to say, so... In terms of fibs, the 236 is like your, as long as you don't come back more than that, so that's 23.6%, then you're still going up. So we go from this low to this high. At this point in silver, we can say that if we, this is spot silver prices, by the way, not silver futures. If we stay above 28.105, which is kind of, you know, 50% of this move that we've done, then we're still going up. And that means on a daily close basis. So uh, that's where I wouldn't really want to see us back below. If we are, then I would say that we're in that bigger correction. And this is the first wave, second wave, and we've still got one more downswing. But as long as we stay above uh, that 28.105, I think that we can look to keep going higher. So now we know where we're wrong. Let's look where we go if we stay right to be bullish silver. And that should actually be quite a good level to buy against as well. If we overlay and just take this most recent swing as well. What your, um, if this is a wave one, two, three, the most common retrace is a 38.2. So let's see if we uh, overlay that and they agree at the same price and we'll change the color and you can see that they do. So there's a lot adding up for this 20 around this 28.10 level 
to be support. So if we look at it on an hourly, uh, we've already bounced off it. This is why it's such good support. So what I'd like to see now for this correction is uh, one down, one up, one down, off we go. So remember, corrections. We've got five waves up, I think. We would expect three waves. And because this is, I think, maybe a wave four, we might do a bit of a triangle here. So just be patient and just trust that as long as we don't fill the gap, as long as we, and if we do, it's just a dirty dive and we jump back up again and close back above 28.10, that we're still going higher. Okay, so that's what you want to see. If we do break it down, we want to see a dive and then and, and then back up again. And then it's we're still going higher in silver for now. So we'll take these pullback levels off. We know where we're looking for our support. It's around 28.10. And then if we go back to the weekly chart, uh, we're looking for 32.117. Now, when you when in 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 uh, when you reverse it to seven eight six, your first target is the thirty eight point two. Your second target is sometimes the twenty three six, and then you tend to come back to the middle. You kind of do that'll be the end of the wave, and you tend to do a bit of a deep pullback. So I'm going to just do a couple of projections to see what they tell us about where we might end up if we keep going higher. And they are, they kind of, I think we'll extend then a little bit, won't we? 32 becomes 33 and 38.8 .8 becomes 40 uh, round number. So it'll probably overshoot to 40 if we get up here. Uh, let's also just take, <clears throat> zoom out a little bit here. Um, because what I haven't got is from this high to low is retrace levels as well. You kind of just see where they overlap but I would say 33 and 40 those are the main two if we can hold a new high which you haven't quite got yet that's the two main levels that I uh, am looking for in silver I need to take this down magnet off there we go so if I put the 50% retrace on, which is not a fib number, but a very common retrace level, you can see that that is around there as well. Anyway, I'm going to stick with this pattern that we're doing and this 786 and say that 32 or 33 is pretty much nailed on and 38.88 or 40 for the second target on the upside in uh, silver. So just uh, hope that's uh, useful. Let's move on. So we'll talk about the next hot one, which is GameStop. Okay. Now, I know that they told everybody that they are. Let's let's hide these drawings I've got, and let's put regular candles up. I know that they told everybody that they are out of their shores. I haven't got log scale on. I've got a regular, but. For my money, when you have a big, giant candle like this, okay, and uh, you measure from the open close, and as long as you stay in the top half, you haven't got a reversal. And this is just a little monthly inside bar. If we look at this on a weekly chart, this is just a little weekly inside bar. As long as we stay in the top half of the body of this weekly candle, the, in other words, the open close, then we are still in an uptrend. So, and that is the place that you would normally expect it to come back to. So if we measure whether that 50% weekly level is, oh look, 210.87. So that's where we are holding. Now, that's based on that, just weekly candlesticks. I've done a lot of projections from all of the little pullbacks here, and they give me kind of cluster levels. So if I was gonna mark them, I'd say, this, I'm going to do it that way, 210 to 220 is a cluster level, 264 here in the middle is a cluster level, 350 is a cluster level, and these highs up here is a cluster level. And so this is where our support is. If we lose this, then we're probably going to come down to the next cluster level, which is 142. If we move above this 261, we're going to go back to 350. And that's how I use these fiblets like a ladder. So 
there's no way though looking for me and I know everybody's going well you know it's come back 61 it's come back it's a 61.8 retrace at the moment that's all that's pretty normal in a trend so I don't think that they're all out I think that we are doing a little ABC correction here in GameStop and it's going up again but the problem is it's going to go up again once everybody's given up and has moved on so let's look at this on an hourly and I'm going to use Heiko Nashi because they kind of even out the price action so you can see it a little better and when we do this you know you can see how these levels works pretty well okay so if we say that the third wave has a is either equal to or 61.8 of the first wave then I'm afraid we've got a little bit further to drop uh, if we finished our B wave we may not have this may be our first swing and then you know we may still be working on the beat if not I think we may have a little bit further to drop but while we're going sideways like this while we're riding our moving averages like this I think that we could see at least a retest of the highs and the thing that's going to trigger it is people seeing price moving up again they'll jump back in so yeah I'm not entirely I'm not entirely bearish yet a weekly close below 210 uh, would make me a little bit bearish but otherwise I wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw a little dirty dive down to that sort of 180 support and then quick smart rally back and close back above that 210 level and up we go so that's what I'd be watching out for in GameStop that would be quite a nice bullish move a little false breakdown and then oopsie up we go again okay I hope I've I hope I've, <laughs> no I've got a bit of silver <laughs> but um uh yeah I don't know I just you know this one did what 1800% I just can't I don't know um we'll see how this one goes right so uh that's GameStop. okay so uh the next thing we're going to talk about uh, unless there's any other stock hot stocks is the dollar index because the dollar index is really the market when you think about what is the market the dollar index is the market everything is priced in it so if nothing else changes but the value of the dollar goes up then the price of things priced in dollars will normally go down a little bit and some markets are more sensitive to the price of dollar the dollar than others so silver is more sensitive to the price of the US dollar than um, uh, gold is uh, soft commodities like sugar and cocoa are really sensitive to the dollar and crypto I'm afraid unfortunately is a little bit sensitive as well so let's take a look at this monthly chart of the dollar index we've spoken before about how the 61.8 and the 38.2 can be like a golden ratio zone where you go back and forward between the two until you find your balance and I feel like if we had this huge drop didn't we after we had this two, huge drop after 2001 we bottomed in 08 and since then we've had a big rally wave two I think this is a wave three and we're in a wave four correction the most common correction in a wave four is a triangle or wedge very often you'll see and it very often if this was a simple three wave correction which it was you'll see a five wave correction in the dollar so this sets us up you know possibly for you know back and forth between the 61.8 for even more annoying sideways action and potentially something like this which could last a while but for now we've bounced off the bottom rail of this 60 uh, of this 38.2 level I thought we'd lost it but we haven't and here we go up we're going to be for sure going up if I'm going to put a films on this swing big swing We'll be sure going up if we get above the 236 here which is away away 92.46 so when we look at this upside of where we are where are we headed to I think 92.46 is it and if we look left here uh, around this level this is also quite a cool um, support and resistance level gosh that didn't work did it
What's going on? There we go. There we go. So these lows, highs, highs. These are this is a monthly chart, remember? Lows, lows. So, and I need to line it up a little bit so that they line up a bit better. There we go. Uh, so 92, I think, is a little bit of a magnet level for the US dollar. And that'll be the first test. If we get above 92, then we really will have reversed here. And we'll be looking back to 96 and then potentially all the way back to 100 again in the top of which. Now, this won't be very good news at all. And if we don't make a triangle here, wouldn't it be, look better, don't you think, if instead of making a big rally here, we just did a shallow rally and we continued down in a big ABC to the monthly 200 moving average, which was the support before. That would be a much better look. So if we don't rally too far, that's the alternate. But at the moment, it's looking really strong. If we look on the daily here, sorry, this is a 15 minute chart. If we look in the daily here, we've got this pretty good inverted head and shoulders pattern in the dollar index. And we're coming up pretty smartly on the uh, neckline. Now, the neckline for me is sloping. So why am, I, why am I going to all this trouble to show you? Well, the reason I'm going to all this trouble to show you this is because this is not very good news for, for Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has been a really good beneficiary of a weak dollar and a strong dollar. Let's just say if we stay in a downtrend, we, you know, we'll probably not do more than 50% of this most recent drop. So this is again 91. Um, and if we get up here and then head lower, that would also kind of, our head and shoulders pattern would take us a bit further than that. But potentially, you know, we've got quite, we haven't quite got a new high. But potentially, you know, we've got quite a lot more of upside in this US dollar if we continue from here. And if you look at some of the other currencies, if you want to trade this, if you look in FX at dollar Swiss, you've got very similar uh, pattern going on. There are a couple of currencies that are bucking the trend that are really strong, that are stronger than the US dollar. Uh, the Turkish lira is probably my favorite one that is really bucking the trend. I think Turkey's on fire and uh, Turkey's doing a bit better. So we're bullish above 92. That's where we're headed back to at the moment. And that would be where our head and shoulders pattern is for this US dollar. So when we see that, when it makes, when I see this, I kind of think, well, maybe we're lining up a bit of a bigger correction um, in Bitcoin because it's gonna be really hard for Bitcoin and silver and quite a few other things to rally while this is going on. So uh, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so now we've done that, let's go and talk about Bitcoin. So the first thing to say is I'm not a massive Bitcoin bear at this point. This is not a giant reversal, is it? Even if we take this most recent swing uh, from the March, from the lows in March last year after the big COVID sell off. We haven't really broken down this 236. We're kind of going back and forward at it. If I zoom out, actually, I'm on the wrong chart. I really need to be on the Bitstamp chart for more history. I would just say, you know, let's look at these daily moving averages as well. We're riding above the 50 moving average. The most interesting level for me at the moment for have we finished our correction and are we going up again in Bitcoin is this 35 level, this orange line. You see how... It was resistance here and then support, 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 resistance, resistance. And even when we had this breakout, we couldn't close above it because this looked like a breakout, didn't it? But it was a false breakout. I'm going to say, you know, we're not really going up in Bitcoin unless we can get above 35. And if we can then get, get above 35 and then above 37.50, I think that, yeah, we're in the next upswing. But for now, this is just really, you know, fibs aside, this is really choppy difficult and if we take 50 percent of this swing that kind of we haven't been able to close above that really either and that's 34 500 so 34 500 35 thousand is what i'm watching now i've said that of course it will be a little false break above it but you know where we close is important and so if you're thinking oh god bitcoin's going all the way up again without me 
you know, what shall I do? I, I have to say, I think that there's still every possibility with this false breakout that this is a declining wedge and we will, we could see another uh, leg lower. This is going to be one of those funky weeks as well, non-farm payroll on Friday. Um, now, one of the things that I look at to say, are we in a correction? So, so remember how we talked about how corrections can sometimes be irregular. So if we're in an uptrend, we have a pullback, then we have a higher high, and, and, and it doesn't look like we've done one. So sometimes as well here, I think we have a leg lower, and then our B leg, we would normally expect to be like that. And then we do a C leg, right? Because the B leg under folds into C way. Well, sometimes this B way leg is a bit funky. And so here, I think that we have done a swing lower, and then we've gone A, B, C for B. So this is our A leg, this is our B leg, and now we're gonna do a C leg. And the reason I think that is because these two bounces, these two legs of correction are entirely equal and that's a sign of that. So what do I mean by that? I mean, if I measure from here to here and I project it from here, that's exactly almost to the dollar where we stopped. So this swing higher bounce and this swing higher bounce were equal. So that's where we are, and that makes us a little bit of a parallel channel now, doesn't it? Um, so I'm not, I'm not feeling super bullish. I'd really love to just see. So now, if we think that this was uh, A and this is B finished, then C will have a relationship to the first swing. So now we can measure this the other way. We can say this is our first leg lower, project it from here. So our first target support level that we haven't quite reached yet is 31,458. That's not very far from here, is it? And if we do the whole hog equal measured move with the first swing, 26, 27,000 basically. So uh, those are the two levels that I'm looking for in Bitcoin. 31,000 basically 31,450 and uh, 27,000 down here, which would mean either the daily 50 moving average or the bottom of the channel. At the moment, gosh, one, two, three inside bars in a row. Not much going on, is there? Not much, certainly not trending anyway. Okay, uh, sorry, you got to go to work, Giselle. See you soon. Okay, so until then, we'll just stay in this channel Watch for 31,500 to maybe be support. And if we don't hold it there, we go below 31,400. We'll go down to 27,000 before we bounce again. And that will be us done. I think that that will be the bottom and, and, and a good level we can buy. Whatever the dollar's doing, you know. So let's see. Okay, so the next one we're going to look is F. And Yash just said, does F daily look like a rising valley bullish pattern? Let's take a look at what, um, didn't mean to draw that. Um, F daily candlesticks. No, <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure what a rising valley bullish pattern is. I'm going to have to check it later. Um, uh, there is a candlestick pattern. So um, there's a cat, there's a rising three methods and four, you know, where you have a big candle, then you have three inside bars, and then it goes up again. That's a pretty good, reliable, a, uh, uh, candlestick pattern um, this is just for me it's just bullish consolidation and it feels like you know when you see these swings so we just talked about uh, corrections but you keep going higher see how these swings uh, in F I feel like they're all part of the same uh, correction you know and that pretty soon we will continue higher again the problem is we're stuck at the previous highs and that's always a place where you see profit taking 
Um, but as long as we don't close back below the 236, all the way from the lows, which we haven't done, let's mark it, we're still going up as far as I'm concerned. So no close below 1148, and we should keep going higher from here. Um, so let's take a look at this daily. It is a little bit toppy, and you know, if we lose this um, daily 20 moving average, I feel like we could see some more downside, you know. It's not over till it's over, but um, if I look at F Bitcoin, I find that a little bit easier to read, right? I think when, when one goes, they'll all go up again. And if we look at F Bitcoin, because it's what we're really looking for is whether F is going to outperform Bitcoin and we want to put money into F. And, and not only that, but when F is outperforming Bitcoin, then altcoins tend to do better. So for me, we have this big bullish pattern here in, uh, bottoming pattern here in Ethereum Bitcoin. This is a weekly chart. Okay, I feel like we had a bit of a sloping neckline on this one. There's a number of ways you can do this. We can say, well, this is a sloping neckline. And we're going sideways at the neckline. Or we can look at weekly closes, which are often very good support and resistance. Um, and say, you know what? We're kind of holding it up here. So I'm not prepared to say that this F Bitcoin has reversed yet. If I look at this big weekly Marabosu candle that we had two weeks ago, as long as we stay in the top half of this candle, the top, and we don't close more than 50% down, which we didn't, in fact, that level was pretty good support. I think we're still in uptrend. So I'm going to say 0 0.038667, which we held very nicely, is the level. As long as we don't have a weekly or a daily close underneath there, we're still going up and this pattern is still valid. And look at this pattern when we've retested this as well. I think it looks amazing. So yeah, I'm afraid I'm still a little bit bullish here, even short term from this low. So if we put our weekly on, you know, from all the way from the low, we're holding the 236. But even from this swing here, you know, this is still really bullish. We're just doing a pullback in an uptrend. And with your naked eye, you can see, look, if you have an impulsive move, you, that's normally the trend. And then the sideways choppy overlapping sideways movement is the correction. So for me in F Bitcoin, this is still getting ready to outperform. The problem is we haven't been able to hold it above this 236 Fib level at 41.55. So I'd like to see this retested. And if we can hold above it, then, yeah, I think F should outperform Bitcoin for a bit longer again. So let's see. Uh, if we were to draw it like this. Crypto loves trend lines. Let's see. We're so close to breaking out. I'd really like to see a little bit more, though, above, these, uh, above this 200 moving average on the hourly. And that would be uh, more interesting for me. And I'll just take this as a short term channel here. So... Yeah, I like F Bitcoin to outperform and then I like F to see new highs and hold new highs if that can happen. So uh, rather than just sort of outperform on the downside. Now let's take a look at Ripple because in my group we talked about buying Ripple. We didn't really have a setup to buy at Ripple at the lows. It was just kind of everybody hating on it that makes you want to buy it. And it had stopped going down. Whenever something stops going down, you're always waiting to see if it can go up again. So buying Ripple at that point, you know, was a bit of a lottery ticket. But there's nothing wrong with it, you know, and let's face it, we went sideways for five weeks. And then, ta-da, wind. <laughs> now, it's not quite a uh, winning lottery ticket, but, you know, the thing is with being an insider, uh, it, 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 with being an outsider or a retail trader is we don't really get all the inside news. We don't know how close Ripple are to a settlement with the SEC, but we do know that if it, they ever make one, um, you know, before every exchange shuts them down, then that this is likely to fly. So what we're waiting for is signs or a hint that that may be happening. Now, 
we're not insiders, but the insiders who buy Ripple leave their little fingerprints on the chart, This these bullish patterns. So why did it rally? Did it rally because the Ripple army decided to defend it? Or is it somebody buying it because they know something? I don't know. But I look at this big weekly bullish candle. And if you want to know if it keeps going, you know, we're going to look for 50% back of the open close of last week. First off as our first support. 0.38474. So that's kind of the ideal, a really nice ideal place to look for it to pull back to and see if we can hold the support and rally from there. Second place I would look, I'd look at this when the swings, you know, oh look, that lines up pretty nicely with a 61.8 as well. So we could say, well, if we bounce from here and we get back above this 60 in the golden ratio we get back above 0.465 then that's us we should be on our way up again so now we know what we're looking for we're looking to not close below 0.387 and we're looking to bounce back above 0.465 to say that we're going up again so yeah today was quite a wild day though wasn't it very wild so Spit out says huge pump and dump scam. It was well documented and so was the exit. Well, then, okay. I didn't buy any, I'm afraid. I just, uh, okay. Well, congratulations, Telegram group. In that case, I think it's unlikely to hold support and turn higher from here. Um, this is going to be quite a scary day, daily, daily candle, but this really is where we are now, where the support should be. It was all over the group. Okay, I missed it, I'm afraid. Hero, am I a woman or man? I'm a woman. Not that it matters. Does it matter? Well, as long as you think it's funny. Okay, let's carry on. Let's look at V-Chain. Let's hope this is not a pump and dump. Okay. That's annoying about Ripple. All right, then. Yeah, I totally missed that. I just had one of those days when I had a lot going on. Okay. I'm going to clean up my chart in this one and we're going to work out a support again, okay? Because let's uh, go to the weekly chart. I'm a woman with a sore throat, okay? Jesus Christ, I don't even smoke, you know? I don't know why I don't have a deep, why I have a deep voice. But I do. Okay. All right. So if I put my fears on from high to low here, the level that you very often pull back to to find support is an 886 fit. I don't know why that is, especially if you stop at the 113 extension. So that's what we've done here. So we're consolidating back and forward at new highs. I really like this after it's finished consolidating to continue higher from here, but there's a couple of things we need to watch out for. If I measure from this low to this high, was this just an ABC equal measured move? Yes, it was. So that's a bit of a problem, okay? From this low to this high, look, this is equal. So it becomes really important that we break above 0 0.0314. And if we can't, we're a little bit stuck. And I'm going to say it's a bit of a problem if we close underneath 0 0.0255 because that confirms the bearish symmetry. And in between, to be honest, we could do anything. So, yeah. So 0 0.0255, we do not want to have a daily close below there. V chain US dollar, the, the party really is over if we do. And if we can close above 0 0.03099, our target is all the way up here at 0 0.0446. So 
or one more push higher. And that would be, look, this is five waves up. Here we've got one, two, three, four. Hopefully we get our fifth wave up and hit our target in um, V-Chain Tether. Thank <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I think I'm too old to care. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this lockdown, oh gosh. <laughs> I know, I'm not an opera singer. You fact, you don't want to hear me sing. Um, I like singing in the shower, but that's about it. Okay, so uh, the next one that we're going to look at is uh, Wing. Apologies, I haven't got everything ready here. So, we had some last minute extra ones. So, let's. Actually, I, had a lot, I almost didn't do a live today because I had so much trouble with my internet. And literally 20 minutes before we got on, uh, I got new internet set up. So, we're good to go. Now, here, Wing is another one. So this is a very similar pattern. In fact, there's a lot of alts doing the same thing here. Let's start uh, with a clean chart and talk about what the problem is. Okay, so first off, um, I'm a bit worried that this is an A and we're doing a B. And we're going to do another leg lower. Okay, and one of the reasons is this is a daily chart. This looks like a little bit of an ABC here. Equal measured move. So like that um, also if I put my so that means that as long as we if we don't drop back below 17 we're good right 17.09 um, and if we can close above 19.6 we're good um, so those are the two in between we could do a bit of knocking around for the trend here so if we go from high to lows do they line up with fibs yeah they, this lines up with the 61.8 so if we reverse and we got drop under this 60 50 we'll come down here i think we'll have a pretty smart bounce from that 38.2 but that's what the problem is so support at 17.85 and we're bearish if we go below seven on a daily close so remember that means intraday we can look underneath. So we could come down here, but as long as we don't close the day under 17.09, I think we're still good to go higher in wing. Um, but potentially a little bit of a sticky level here where we could see some sideways. And this one sure likes to go sideways. So that's the more that's a little bit of a bearish view, and then we'll have another swing lower. Um, especially because this is so so far. Anyway, so tricky and overlapping. Now, the more bullish view is that this is a big A or 1, and this is 2, or B or 2. And if that's the case, we should continue higher, shouldn't we? Because this is where uh, we would be 61.8 of the first swing. So I'm not terribly bearish yet. I actually think we could keep going to 22, and then the second target would be 28, and then the third target would be 39. So when we look at this in terms of daily moving averages, I think it looks pretty good. So 22, 28 and 39.3 would be my targets for uh, wing. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Heba. Um, oh, do you know, I just... Here's the thing with trading. Trading is so stressful. It's really stressful, isn't it? Like, just shall we put the pull the trigger on? Is it working? You know, when it's not going. Sometimes it's like you know, having your veins go cold. It's like you've got liquid nitrogen in them. So it's stressful enough. Uh, you don't really want to be screaming and yelling. You, yeah, I, I, I have to fight sometimes. My excitement or. Uh, depression <laughs> um, and try it because it because you really kind of need to make good decisions um, and even when things aren't going well what you need is to be able to stay objective and make good decisions really 
you just stick to your plan have a plan first this is where I'm right this is where I'm wrong and just keep you know eventually it all works oh meat fish you are so right meat fish is the most stressful thing is when you're when you're flat or going sideways and everyone else is winning you big well that's that is FOMO isn't it that is ultimate FOMO and you have to fight it and I have to say you know everyone if you're all you know not a member of Wall Street bets and you're fishing around for what their ideas are you know the crowded ones they won't be the ones so um I don't know. Yeah, there's there's no... You, you really have to compete with yourself, not other people. Uh, that's I really do think that that's the key to happiness. Because if you're always comparing yourself with other people, then there's always going to be someone that got more, bought it earlier, sold it higher, got a nicer car, got the one that you wanted, got the girl you wanted... You'll never be happy. Okay. Let's look at XVG. Let's not look at any more pumps, eh? Let's look at some. So this Verge is one, a classic sideways uh, for a couple of days now. And I've been waiting for it to turn up again. So it's a little bit annoying. Let's put regular candles on. So one, two, three inside bars in a row. Am I still bullish? I am still bullish because, again, we talk about that candlestick pattern where as long as you don't close more than 50% down, we're still consolidating sideways um, and looking to hopefully go higher from here. But you know what? When you've got a little sideways range going on, it's up to the market gods, really. It could go either way, couldn't it? So three little inside bars just mean indecision in the market and um, they don't really tell you anything about direction you have to wait until they break I think we're probably going to get a week weekly inside uh, bar here as well what I do like bigger picture in Verge is this beautiful bottoming pattern that we have spent gosh two years building <laughs> two years so I I'm going to stay bullish. I think we've broken out from this inverted head and shoulders pattern. I don't mind them when they slope down. I don't like them when they slope up. And I think that I'm looking for this to break higher. And the first target is 0 0.0286. So big picture, I love this. It's just a matter of how, you know, getting in. And I think a break higher, a close above this high here at 0 0.018 with a stop under the low, that's where we're going. So yes, verge. But at the moment, sideways looking for this one to break higher is this the little hourly inverted head and shoulders pattern no not one that i like because this it's not balanced right you want the left shoulder and the right shoulder to kind of look balanced otherwise it's not but is this the first leg up a little bit of a correction <coughs> and am i looking for this to uh, continue higher here yeah but it hasn't broken out yet and it may not, you know, bigger picture if everything in crypto is going to take a little bit of a dip. It's possible that this does too. And we spend a bit more time going sideways. Okay. All right then. So waiting for a breakout in Verge. I love it. Upside target is 0 0.02863. Next one we're going to look at is ICX. Another one that I really like. Let's, I'm looking at them against dollar tether, okay? Mainly because just Bitcoin is so quiet. Now, this one, this is what you want to see, you know. Uh, this is the daily chart. We got above the 236. See how we couldn't close above this 236 fib here? We came back to it, shallow little pullback. When we broke above it, it became support, happy days. I feel like this is. A pullback and we've still got another swing high because our next target is up here at the 38.2 next which is 0.9782 so now it's a question of where are we coming back to when are we going to get ready to go up again so uh, 
if we think we're going up again, well, one way to do it is to look for above the 236 fib. We're above it. Happy days. Look at this 38.2 next as resistance. See highs, lows. This will be the next pop above 0.7832 and so on. Another way to do it, and they do an Elliott wave, is they think that when um, we're in a trend that price is contained normally in a parallel channel, so I actually like to draw them on the bottom first. I know that's not very funny, but there we go. Okay, so just because if they squeeze, that's where you end up. So I feel like if we pop out of this parallel channel, that that's us on the way up again. Be careful though, third touches. So when you get a triple bottom or a triple top, and when you get a third touch of a trend line, it very often is a false break. So before you get a real one. So I would expect a false break, a pullback, and then a real break. And that, if we do that here, should make an inverted head and shoulders pattern for ICX. So don't think we'll break out first time uh, by the pullback in ICX. Tether, and we are looking for 0.98 target. Okay, next. And then above 0.98, we're looking for 1.25. That's just because that's the first target doesn't mean that I think that's going to be the top. I actually definitely think we're going to go to 1.247, 1.25, but uh, that's the next place where we might have a bigger correction. Sana, uh, Sanure Ratain, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we're going to look at um, Phil, which um, okay. First off, here's um, Phil Bitcoin. Now, I've been using um, Fibonacci projection levels from the bounces to for targets, and this 1.618 level, you know, we got underneath it. We tried to recover it, and we haven't. I'm not sure that that's the real uh, level level. If we take the most recent swing lower, or just I don't know if this is the most recent swing level, then this 50, if it's 50%, that says still in a downtrend. And look, we couldn't close above 50% here. So we're not, we're still in a downtrend really for fill against Bitcoin. Now, that's okay. Uh, if we take this big swing here like this, Got a bit more room, haven't we, till we get to that two, three, six? But you know, with this, with the twenty moving average as well, I'm afraid we haven't bottomed yet in Phil Bitcoin. So that doesn't mean that Phil Dollar isn't going to be going up. It just means it's not probably the fastest horse in the race at the moment. So let's take a look at Phil. You know, you could still buy Phil US Dollar, anticipating that it might start to outperform, but at the moment. Uh, so let's look at Phil Tether. Uh, again. So the problem with this, right? Uh, remember we talked about final legs often being five waves. So if this one, two, three, four, this might have one more to go. And very often wave fours make these kind of wedge or triangle patterns. So I think that that's what we're seeing here. I don't know. And, and so... Yeah, now, so a downtrend, A, B, C, D. We could go a little bit higher to the top here if the market's looking at closes instead or something like that. And this daily 50, then this is quite a bearish candlestick today. And, you know, got everybody excited, didn't it? Thinking trading above the daily 50 moving average and everybody thought, oh, this could be the move. And then it's all the way back down again at the lows. So I'm afraid I'm not really liking this one. And what I would want to see is a close above that daily 50. And then I'd like to see a pullback and a retest to be support to go higher. 
otherwise I think I'm afraid that the likelihood is that this one continues lower and we're not quite done yet so if we broke down from this wedge I wouldn't hodl I'd go and put it in something that uh, is moving higher preferably um, but you, <laughs> you can all try right is, FS, is FFI going to go parabolic? Not sure. Let's have a look at Lend. Okay, so, oh, look. I've made one of those really messy charts. This is going to make me ill. That's, um, okay. I'm just going to say the reason I was doing this, look, at every correction, okay, I did this quickly in the group, in my group. Every correction, I did put the fibs on to use projections, all right? And so I'm going to leave everything except that one. So let's uh, hide this so we can look at a nice clean chart and we'll just uh, trust where the clusters are. So we're going to say this lovely cluster here is our support. If we lose it, we're going to come back to this bigger 1.618 level. And our next target up here is at 412 in this zone between 400 and 412. So we're looking for a little bit of a pullback. The last one was three days and we carried on and, and so on. So I've got Heike and Ashley on here because I really like them uh, to help me stay in with the trend. But you can see just with regular candles, this is not a reversal yet. This is just a little sideways. Could it turn into a bigger pullback? Yeah, it could. Let's hide this. So where to go from I'm gonna go from this low so the first sign that we have stopped going up let's get rid of the red uh, would be below this first 236 here which we have not broken yet we're sitting on okay so 280 so the first time we're going down would be below 280. And then I'm going to honestly move it all the way down here to these lows. and say this will be our second support, 252. So short term, you know, we're still in an uptrend. We're just going sideways. Now that's all relative to what time frame you're trading. If you're a short term trader, if you're trading the 15 minute or an hourly, which means you don't kind of walk away, do you? Uh, then it's rolled over hasn't it it's not a uptrend anymore uh, but bigger picture this is still uh, not a reversal yet just a nice pullback to the hourly 200 moving average and let's see if we can go up again this is another one you know whenever you rally if you think about it so in a in a trend in a downtrend you have high lower lows and lower highs okay and then when you take out that lower high and make a higher high and then a higher low, you've reversed the trend. So the most important thing here is this high. That's the first thing, first sign of a reversal, isn't it? And so when we do that, when we look at it always, those previous are the first really trouble levels. So always. And that's what we've got here. So what we would like to see is either a nice double bottom, triple bottom, some kind of bottoming pattern in lend. Or we would like to see... Uh, an inverted head and shoulders pattern, maybe back to these uh, left shoulder level, that's something like that. Uh, but some kind of a bottoming pattern now that we've hit this resistance. Or just a simple break above that level and a stop below the pullback would be good enough, right? So that's what we're looking for. New highs above 323. Remember, we're looking for 400 to 420 next in uh, Lend Tether. Okay, next one we're going to look at is uh, Fetch. Where's Fetch? I know, it's such messy, so I'm getting anxiety looking at these messy charts. Okay, let's have a bit of a clean up. 
first off, I kind of feel like we've reversed the trend here because we had, you know, I think we did it here actually because this was the last swing high, short term anyway, on the daily. Fetch against Bitcoin is on the up and up. Let's look at where we are because we have retested these lows. I'm going to move this big fib level down. And then I'm going to also just measure this high to this low in this swing because the 236. Really, the 200 moving average should be our first target. When you get a bullish cross of the 20 and the 50, which we have beautifully here, then this previous high will be trouble, and then the next target will be the 200 moving average. You don't need kind of fibs or anything complicated uh, when it's making a nice bottom like this. So, look, and the 200 moving average lines up perfectly with our 236 fibs. So we'll call that our first target at 477, but we might get a little bit of a knockback when we hit this big previous high here at 357. So resistance, maybe a pullback, and then our first target, 477 in fetch. Looking good. Fetch dollar. Uh, fetch tether then. Well, let's just let's see where else you can trade this. Everywhere. Uh, we'll just do Tyler at Binance. Let's see. Okay, I'm <coughs> going to zoom out to the monthly here and I'm going to get rid of that. Cuts, you can see where did we not be able to close above. So we went all the way up to the 38.2. That's pretty good. When you do that, um, your minimum target for when we for the next swing, so this is our first swing, um, the harmonic pattern rules say that our minimum target should be 1.618 extension of this pullback. So I'm going to go high to low here. If we make new highs, this is. So if we make new highs, just make sure I've got it on the low so that it will line up. Our target's that 1.618, and that might be. The 50, no, between the 50 and the 61.8. I'm going to put them on. And then the second one would be the 886, 2.618, which would, which would be a bat pattern up here. So that's really our big target if we can get there. Ta da! Uh, fetch. <laughs> Looking pretty good. Riding above all of our uh, daily moving averages and on the way. But, you know, this retested this 236 fib level at 0.12. This could be a little bit of resistance um, before we get there. And then the next place, of course, retesting the previous highs. That will also be a bit of trouble. Um, and then, yeah, we can look to the moon and uh, 0.4375. That'd be very nice for fetch tether. Reef is next. Um, can't remember if I've got a chart ready for this one. I don't think I have. So let's see. Quick. KOT says silver is not Wall Street bets, it's the hedge funds. You know. There was a there was quite a real there was a real scandal about um, in the in the London you know a lot of metals are traded in London and there was quite a lot of naughty stuff going on you know banging the clothes and uh, you know naughty stuff traded in the futures let's put it that way and and on the London metals and I thought that they kind of cleaned up I do think this thing about um, uh, JP Morgan short was quite funny for a while, but um, didn't really, you know, didn't really, unfortunately, didn't really work. So uh, I'm just trying to find reef. Here's our reef. Now, look at this. Isn't this a lovely, lovely uh, bottom look here? Yeah. So I'm just going to take these uh, big fibs away. On the daily, look. 
um, with regular candles. I put my fibs on, you can't see us on the daily, but you can see us on the four hour from this swing high because I didn't like the spike. So my fibs go from this swing high to this swing low. And the 50%, which is very common in a correction, was resistance. And we've had a lovely pullback and made a beautiful bottom and we're bottoming and I think ready, getting ready potentially to turn up again. The, the problem is that this may be just the first swing of correction. We may see an ABC correct, uh, bounce and then one swing lower. And the reason is that when you reverse at a 50%, you very often come back 50%. So that would mean from this low to this high, 50% is a little down here and we haven't got here yet. Point one six four five four one five. So if that's what's going to happen, we need to watch how this rally unfolds because if it unfolds as an ABC or if it unfolds where we can't, I'm just going to move that away, we can't rally more than 50% run because if we keep doing that 50% thing, it kind of keeps repeating itself, doesn't it? Here's our 50% here. In fact, I thought we'd stopped here. Now, this would be cool if we can hold above this, wouldn't it? 61438. If we can hold above that, we should keep going higher. Let's see. We might be out of the woods. <sighs> I don't know, though. I, uh, it doesn't... It all feels a little bit slow. Maybe it's me. Yeah. Let's see if we can make an, if we can't make a new high here and we double top with this swing failure pattern, I'm afraid that I think that that may be it. And then we see that next swing lower. And if we do that here, so in other words, we go from here to here. Let's see if that lines up as well. Yes, it would. Okay, so... I have a feeling that we've got one more push lower to come in reef tether before we bottom and look for really good support at 0 0.016654. Okay, maybe a little squidge lower, but that's where I'd be looking. Uh, go to sleep, <laughs> look at Nokia. Okay, I'll try and look at Nokia, okay. No, I'll do it at the end. I'm going to whiz through crypto uh, now if I can, if I'm going to try anyway. Uh, do as many as I can. I'll do a few more anyway. I'm going to do the ones that everybody's talking about, which is dot. Here's dot tether. Here's this lovely little sideways wedge that we're doing. I don't know which way this is going to break, but the break of this, I think, will tell us. Sometimes it doesn't end up being a triangle. Remember, it'll be an ABC. So if we do it, so this swing... And these two swings are equal. We might have a little false breakdown, something like this. Uh, and if we do that, don't panic. Okay, watch to see if it bounces back up again. Um, so that would be where the equal measure move would be. So that would be the worst case. So we're not ready to turn up again, are we? In fact, I would really like to see us say hi to this four hour moving average, this 200 moving average, um, and 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 so on. So waiting for one more dip before uh, we go up again in dot tether. Potentially a little bit lower, maybe 14.3, 14.2. If you're looking at dot against Bitcoin, you, with these you don't have to trade it against Bitcoin, but you kind of do want to make sure that it's not going to make some horrible dramatic reversal. And if we look at this, this also tells me we've got further to go because I've got my fears from high to low. I'm going to count this as an 886 reversal. And if I do that, then we're going to come back to this 50 here, which means we're not quite there yet. Uh, here's this 50 here. And if it's not, it's a 942, which it might have been, then the 61.8 might be all that we'll see, which would be we've already done it and we need a retest. So two uh, support levels. 
and just waiting for this to bottom and turn up again. Let's again look at the four hour. Let's see. One of these two levels will hold us in dot Bitcoin. 43,739 or 38,809. Good luck. Okay, next one we're going to look at is Luna. Been a while since I looked at Luna. Oh, I can't even find it. That's annoying. Okay. Let's look at Luna Bitcoin first. Boom. New highs. See, this is what I mean. Like, so take heart. Like, if you're looking at F or if you're looking at uh, some of these other markets that are stuck at previous highs, look at what we did here, you know. Uh, for a couple of days and now we've broken to new highs so looking really good for Luna Bitcoin this high should be support but sometimes I have to say that it's the 886 that is it comes back that little bit further just to shake out the people that rely on new highs being support so 4670 is support now we're going to be bearish if we come back below there otherwise we're looking for extensions so sometimes it's just a 113 so 5495, 5975, and then 7144. Now, at some point, see how this is a, I feel like this is a one, two, three. At some point, we're going to have a wave four before we keep going higher. And depending on whether you got in or, yeah, up here maybe, I don't know. I feel like we're in wave three and where we come back to will be the previous wave four which may be here uh, before we go up again so uh, but for now it's still going higher uh, looking good in fact Luna Bitcoin Luna dollar let's see let's look at Luna Teller which is sort of parabolic at this point honestly if you don't really have any Luna, then it's one of those things where you probably are going to have to look for something else because you're a little bit late to the party. And you really need a pullback entry um, when stuff looks like this, you know, it just... So this 4.236 works really well. I think the next upside for Luna dollar is 2.37. But uh, what's the most, if we look every time we have a big long green candle, what's the most common thing we do next? We have a little inside bar and go sideways, don't we? Big green candle, inside bar, have a pullback. Big green candle, little inside bar, pullback big green candle little inside bar keep going so big green candle like this tomorrow's candle will be a little inside bar and then we'll probably decide which way next if we come back to test support it's at 1.568 and if it breaks higher we're looking for 2.374 uh, that's Luna uni I might have to have a drink in a minute and I haven't got one with any alcohol in it. That's so freaking... I'm kidding, I'll be all right. Uh, 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 uni, Uni, here we go. So we'll start with Uni Bitcoin. We're going to go to weekly chart. Is Uni going up against Bitcoin? Absolutely. It's smashing it. So, so a little uh, fib staircase look. So we paused at the 38.2, this 50% was a midpoint, 61.8, we're holding above it, 53580, so we're going to look higher from here, next upside is, uh, 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 64351, so that's what we're looking for next, 64351. 
and we're just going to keep climbing the staircase till it stops working and when it stops working is when you fall back below the one kind of underneath it so if we get up here and we come back and we drop further than 0.53 we're in a bigger correction but for now this is looking pretty nice we've got our one two three at some point we're going to have uh, a pullback to a previous low but at the moment I think we've got further to go 64 530 then for next upside I haven't done this right it's because my magnet's not on okay yeah 64 Gosh, and then 75,000 and then new highs. So looking really good um, for uni Bitcoin. Uh, if we do see a little bit of a pullback here, then support is at 0 0.00053. I love it. Nice one. Knock me in. Okay, knock, knock. Is that what you want me to look at? Knock, okay, I'm going to... I just got such a bloody long list. If I start getting, honestly, if I start getting distracted and looking at stuff that's not on the list, then we're going to be here all night. So I just can't do it. Sorry. Um, cream. I thought I had cream here. Oh no. Okay, cream. Okay, first thing we're going to uh, look up is cream US dollar. It's not really traded against uh, Bitcoin. So cream US dollar is another one where we've stalled at previous highs. And so we're looking for really kind of just some bullish consolidation. And then hopefully we keep going. We're going to look for that 886 Fib, hopefully to be first line of support. Um, and if that doesn't, we're going to look to come back no more than the 236. And if we do that, then we know we've got a bigger correction. So our first line of support in cream is 264, 264.25. And uh, if we keep going higher, we're going to look for these Fib extensions, 367 and 461. Uh, if we drop back under that 886 Fib level at 264, Then, uh, we're bearish underneath on a close underneath 234. So, there. So, this is ideal trend support up here at 264. And if we drop underneath 234, that's we've stopped going up and we're done. And because we can count five waves here, there's a little bit of a risk that we might do that. So be a little bit careful. So that's where we're looking. 264 first then and bearish below 234 in cream. Nice move though. Okay. Can't believe somebody gave me a thumb down. Why don't you just like, don't come, like go somewhere else. Good grief. <laughs> well, honestly, actually I couldn't care. I really couldn't, so. Uh, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna look at KNC and then Carver. Right, so KNC first. I think it's probably because I said I wouldn't look at Nokia. I will try and look at Nokia at the end. Uh, uh, uh. Kyber Network. Now, Kyber Network has been in this sideways consolidation for a while at this 50% level. Now, remember we said, let's zoom out here. This is Kyber Network against Tether. We've got high to low. This 236 Fib was a big deal. And we stalled at the 50%. So remember how fibs are like a staircase? So here, although we stalled at the 50%, we didn't break this 38.2. We held support and went sideways. So now, really, we're just waiting to see 
We're just waiting to see if we can break out higher of this uh, consolidation. So we're going to like draw it up like this and see. Yes, <laughs> I don't feel like we've done enough correction. I'm going to be honest. I can see that we went a big drop down here, A, B, C, and potentially that could be an us. But it feels like this is an A and this is a B, and we're going to do like a, you know, C leg before we go up again. Um, now, if I'm wrong, then we'll break out the top of this wedge. And so I would put an alert up here, and that's where my alarm would be. And so uh, if we break that trend line, um, You found a bugged BTC extent. Oh, that's annoying. <coughs> there's so many. There's so much. You have to be so careful, don't you? Thank you. Okay. Add an alert on the trend line. So yeah, if I'm wrong about us retouching, we will break out of the top side here in Kyber Network. And of course, if we do that, because this is a 50%, we'll look for the 61.8 or 1.527, then 1.75, and then so on. Hopefully new highs. Now, the cool thing about this is this was a double bottom. And a pretty good one too. So the rule about a double bottom says that if you break the ridge in the middle, you will go twice that distance. So if we do that here, so we go from this high to this low. So we measure, this is our distance then, and we project it from the breakout. Gosh, where does that take us? Back to these highs all the way up here. So if we can break above this 50% level and this uh, double bottom level that we're having this fight over, our target is all the way back to the range highs at two. Uh, just above. So that's why Kyber Network's got quite a nice look to it. Okay, <laughs> that's a good joke, Orangeman. Thank you. Okay, uh, 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 Carver. I don't think I've got a chart ready for this, so I'm just going to do it here. Uh, Carver. First, we're going to look at Carver Bitcoin. Are we going up again? Well, the good news is here, and this is what I love to see, is above these moving averages and then a pullback to find support. And yeah, I think that in terms of the daily, we've got a short term trend change, counter trend. And our target when we do that is back to the 200 moving average, which is all the way up here at 16,600. So this is looking really interesting for me in Carver Bitcoin uh, for more upside. If I put my fib target on, first target is 13.765. Well, there's a couple of levels we've got to get through. First of all, there's these lows here are the resistance that we have been stuck underneath. So that's going to be our confirmation. We're going to go higher above uh, 8,200 basically, isn't it? That's this double bottom here that's now resistance. Above 8,200, I think we go back to these highs, which you'll remember is our trend resistance at 11,700 and then 13,700. First Fib level. So yeah, looking really good. It's just a matter of when this turns up again in Carver. Looks like it's doing it now, doesn't it? Let's see. I'm always nervous, remember. Uh, we've got five, what well, could be five waves up here. And so it could be that we're in that bigger correction, you know, where we go A, B, C, A, B, C, and then one more before we go again. And so how will you know? Well, if this rally stops at an equal margin roof level, that would be a good indicator that that's what's going on and then reverses. So above 71.77, we really kind of don't want to stop at 77.50 and then drop back underneath this 
77 level again that would be that's how I would say yeah I know we're doing another leg lower okay uh, that's carver Bitcoin then looking pretty strong otherwise that's what to watch out for in carver uh, yeah let's uh, and carver US dollar I'm not sure if you trade this one yeah it does lovely look at this lovely sideways consolidation on the daily doing that little fight around the 200 moving average so a breakout from this sideways trading range that would be a really nice uh, uh, look to wouldn't it to say that we're still going higher watch out though this is another one one two three four overlapping as well so it may be that we've gone a b and we may need to come back to this 50 moving average before we go again uh, in a kind of left shoulder pattern like this so be just a little bit careful in carver um, whilst we're still in this sideways range we're not really out of trouble You know, when I put these on, it looks much better, doesn't it? This T36 Fib level, which is also really good support, support, resistance, we're now holding above. And so maybe we are on our way for another push higher. In that case, because of the respect that we've shown to this T36 Fib, we're looking for 2.8 and then 3.32 next in Carver Teller. Looks good in that case, doesn't it? So nice one. Next one is RLC. I'm just gonna have a quick drink. So RLC, another one with a really nice bullish flip of our daily moving averages. Looking really good. And this one pulled back to find support. We're looking for this to turn up higher from here. Go green on the high can actually see a nice strong move. That's what I would like to see here. Looking really good. Uh, because this was a new low. Um, yeah, it feels like. Yeah, ABC 50% back. A really good place to rally from, I think, if I measure from this. Brilliant. So, where's going to be our target? Well, we're going to go back to the daily. Because when you get the bullish cross, your target is always the 200 moving average. And wherever it is when you get there. It's at 7,600 at the moment, but we'll put the fibs on from here and use that 236 fib. So 6,400 and these previous highs should, would be your target in iExec I against Bitcoin um, when we get there, 6,476. So RLC Bitcoin, 6,476. If you're trading RLC dollar, I don't think many people do, but... We'll see, make sure we're still going up again. Here's our weekly. So if this is just, where's that tricky place? It's always that 50%, isn't it? So we'll go high to the low. Look at that. So we did get stuck at that 50% level. And a little bit of a false break higher as well. So this weekly, I think we've already been up there and come back though. So let's see. Uh, we've been up to the 50%, come back at least 50%. And so now we're just sideways. We really need a breakout in this one, don't we? We 
we've basically been sideways since the 7th of January. But like Bitcoin, Bitcoin topped on what, the 8th of January? This, this topped on the 9th of January. So all of these crypto are in the same pattern, aren't they? Bitcoin has been in a correction since the 8th of January. This has been in a correction since the 9th of January. And I think when once they all one goes, they all go. And this one will follow on. So that's probably what we have to watch and wait for. So not much going in the RLC sideways. Nothing doing for me. Interesting. Uh, yeah, anyway. So we're going to look at EGLD, which is... Um, Next. Okay. Well, we can if I can find the top. Uh. <laughs> uh, gosh. Let's look for EGLD. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's just draw it. Okay, we'll start with EGLD Bitcoin because we do kind of want to make sure that it's going up against Bitcoin and we want to make sure it's not one of those horrible equal measure move correction levels. That was my dog. Sorry about that. Uh, no, it's looking quite good. It's looking very good. So EGLD, I think it's got a little bit more upside before we uh, stop from here. And if we take a peek at FIB levels, um, it's not really respected and maybe it is going on this spike. That would be crazy. Oh, God, Gunner. Gunner's just rearranging the furniture. I tried to climb on a stool and it fell over. Silly dog. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to this and ignore the spike and say I think that this has probably got more uh, upside mainly because I like this reaction here at the 61.8 and the 50. This is messy though. Uh, so let's take a look at EGLD dollar or tether and see if that is a bit more helpful. At least we know we're going up against Bitcoin and we're outperforming. Okay, so let's measure from this high. Some markets you know they just don't do fibs and there's nothing you can do about it and but i do really like this pause at the 1.618 if i put this on at this 113 on here instead i think that this is where we stopped at here um, and these fib levels look this 786 it's not perfect but i think we've got more upside in egld tether as well and i think we're headed to ACT. Sometimes the 2 and the 2.24 are kind of in between levels, uh, but not normally high. So 82 is where I think we're headed to in EGLD. And uh, it was a really cool recovery today, wasn't it? Lovely ABC pullback. And uh, we're on our way up again. If we pop these on, we're looking quite good. So yeah. So what you want to see, A, B, C. Now, sometimes it's just the first swing. We're going to do this and this and then this before we go. Uh, but in terms of the bigger trend, EGLD is looking good, I think. Now, I just want to see quickly what the question was about EGLD because... Should we take the four-hour signal... Alexandra, no, I'm going to say at this point, wait for it to pull back. So we've had the first big swing. You could take this for our swing signal, but this time of day, I think I would like to see this do this. And then on an hourly or 15 minute pullback and then carry on and uh, trade against that uh, 200 moving average or the hourly moving averages. So they're your best friend. Okay, uh, next one we're going to look at is Comp SNX, and then we're going to look at um, Nintendo, and I suppose I'll look at Nokia. Okay, <laughs> uh, Comp first off.
Oops. Comp Bitcoin. Is comp going up against uh, Bitcoin? Yes, it is. It'd be really good to see it the other side of this 200 moving average as well. Uh, and hold above it. So, so far, so good. Especially, you know, this is uh, around here. If we just take from this low, really tricky levels around here for us to fail at. Uh, for, or for comp Bitcoin to fail at. Um, so, uh, an important uh, place to negotiate and continue, if we're going to continue higher without a bit of a setback here. What I like about this is, this is definitely above the TC6 Fib. And so that should, if it's not a false breakout, give us some support. And sometimes it is, you know, and you'll end up closing the week back underneath it. And it's pretty annoying, but I think we're okay. Yeah, in fact, now it's support. So I'm feeling quite bullish comp Bitcoin. I think that we could continue higher. Uh, the problem is, though, is Bitcoin going to go down and take this down with us? So looking good. Looking very good. So... Potentially three waves. Great level to buy against. Let's put it that way. Great level. So Comp Bitcoin gets the vote of approval. Comp US dollar. And if you're looking at this and above that 236 fib, especially see how on this, see how we validated it uh, with a double top on the hourly and then this perfect back test. So our next upside target here is 13592. 0.013592 for comp Bitcoin and then and then on comp dollar or comp tether. Here we go on the daily <laughs> these some of these charts. I love it. So I feel like we've got, let's take a look at the 4-hour, but I feel like we've got a bit further to go uh, here. I just want to see if this behaved. Not really. Um, uh, 385. Now, if I'm wrong and this is slightly higher, which we should be doing it from here, then 391. So between 385 and 391 would be where I would like to see this. Um, go and the support because we messed up this one too so I think it's 324 but this is another one that's not really loving these fib levels and so when I when it really doesn't want to do that here's how I look at this so once we start a trend each time if we look at these swings and we measure where we pull back to so here Uh, this is a perfect look, 50%, and we carried on high. Let's look at the next swing. So each time you get a pullback, this was a perfect test of the 50%, wasn't it? And we carried on higher. When we get up here, I don't think we even came that far. It's just the 236 fib. But this swing here uh, that we're in now, you know, I always look to see, as long as we don't close more than 50% down, as far as I'm concerned, we're still going up. And so when I look at this here in comp US dollar, we didn't close more than 50% down. As far as I'm concerned, we're still going up in this case. So comp tether, still going higher. I'm not entirely sure where the targets are because I'm not feeling that it likes FIBS terribly. But if you put it onto my head, I'd say 391. And gosh, 583. 391 might be a little bit of a problem. Let's see what happens when we get that. Okay. Uh, SNX, US dollar tether. And. Home straight. Here we go. Um. I'm just going to look back. I can't remember what the question was for SNX. So let's look at it against Bitcoin first. 
Um, that's the next US dollar tether they want to look at. Okay, I'm just have a quick peek at this because um, it kind of depends which one it's traded more, but it does matter sometimes, especially if you get a big level going on. So here, um, here's one that does like fib slick. And you can see how we reversed at the 786 fib, but we didn't break the 61.8. So we haven't reversed yet. We just paused here at 786. And as long as we don't close back underneath this 61.8, which it doesn't look like we're doing, we're just consolidating and then hopefully we continue higher. Next fib would be the 886 and then new highs and then so on. So that's 61.69. So SNX Bitcoin going sideways. For me, that means that pretty much whatever Bitcoin is doing, SNX is going to do. So let's take a look at the dollar chart. See if it gives us any better idea. So we could start with the daily again. Another one in a lovely uptrend. Going to measure from this high to this low. Just making sure we've done it right. Get rid of the messy one. Now, when we draw this in, we can see pretty nicely previous highs, 1.618 we blasted through, but it was support, 2.618 stopped us pretty nicely. So this should be support now. And so when we look at where we don't really want to close back below in this SNX, I would say that this 16.632 uh, is the level. So now when we look at the hourly, that's where if we look left, that's where our support is. So I wouldn't mind us testing it, but I don't really want to see a daily close below 16.63. And that, I think, would be the best place to buy it against as well if we're looking for to go higher. Uh, next upside target is 25.38. Wow. Hooray. Now, at the three point, here's the thing. The 3.618 is not a fib level. But... A lot of people put it in and sometimes we stop there because of it but it's not a fib level i just want you to know it's not but we might pause there 22 but 25.38 would be the target okay let's look at some more uh, stocks um we are going to look at uh and um Nintendo and here we go so let's start on the monthly chart of Nintendo because here's another stock with that same old problem of previous highs pausing at previous highs very often you see profit taking and so uh, a little bit of sideways because people think oh, it'll never keep going once it's got here I kind of think it might but um, let's see Now, if this was wave one or A, and this was two or B, then we have also, when we look here, reached this equal measured move level, haven't we? So we really need a close to hold above 78.47 if we're gonna keep going higher. And we're gonna be super bearish if we drop back below 60.48. Now, I know this is a monthly chart, and this is a really long view, but yeah, 60.48 is really big, a really big deal uh, if we want to keep going higher. And 107 would be where I'd like to go if we can keep going higher. So now when we look, because it's a bit funky, these candlesticks. Um, yeah, so far so good. So when we say look, we look for like 50% bag, as long as we do that. Things aren't looking so bad. It's just a correction. And we'll see where our 50% back is. Oh, look. 
exactly where we bounce from. So I think this is looking really good, but I really want to see it above 78. And that's right where this is here. So if we can push through that, happy days. Look for 91 and then 107. If we don't, okay, if we stall here, then bah, we're going to come back further to this daily 200 moving average before we uh, can go again. So there. Okay, so it's all about what happens here. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is Nokia. Hold on, I'm just going to save that because I want to remember next time I look, Nokia. Let's, what should we look at it in? Let's look at it on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, and we're going to do regular candles. Where did we fail today? Because this is quite interesting. First off, the most bearish pattern is what? An ABC, isn't it? Equal measured move. So where was the high today in Nokia? Let's measure from here. Low to high. Projected from here. Oh, look, that was the high. So this, so you, when you reverse at an equal measured move, which was up here, you better hold that 61.8, because if you don't, you're going to do a, a 786 retrace of the whole pattern. So a 786 retrace of the whole pattern in Nokia means from here to here. Um, let me find 786. So we've got further down to come, uh, which would be here. So 3.38. So I, we're not done. I think that we have got further to fall. And I'm looking for 3.38. And that's the monthly big picture view of Nokia. Now, so that doesn't mean that we're not going to have a bit of a, a dead cat bounce. We could have a dead cat bounce that goes all the way back to that 61.8 broken fib level at six point whatever. But I still think that we are going to come down to three before we bottom. So 3.38 to be precise. So let's put a couple more fib levels on and see actually where we might bounce to. Because at the moment, this gap, you know, when you have a gap on a chart, if you don't fill it very quickly, as in within a couple of days, it becomes a quite strong support and resistance. And that's what we're seeing here. Support and then uh, uh, and then down here would be the support. So if that breaks 3.38, if we bounce from here. So that's our 786. Let's put them on the right. Right. And let's check a couple more in. Oh, look. So here we are actually at a 61.8 fib. So we could very easily, I'm not kidding. So if we bounce from here, we're most likely to go back to 5.71. But if we continue higher, we're going to go to 6.67. And that's really strong resistance. And then I expect us to do that and make a Gartley pattern before we continue higher again. So Nokia, that's my daily view. Yes, I do think we'll bounce from here to at least 5.7, maybe 6.67, and then 3.38, okay? Okay. Look at that one little request, Temidaya, myth. Let's have a quick look at myth before I go then. Um, And then I'm done in, so we're done two hours, so we'll call it a night. It's boring for, it must be boring for you. Let's see. Mithril. Okay, we're going to look at Mithril Bitcoin first of all on the daily chart, see what's going on. We're going to have to move a few of these, aren't we, Dan? Been a while, so here we go. And then where does that one come from? No, take rid of that. Get rid of that. Okay. Let's 
sorry, it won't be long. I will see I had a million projections going from there. Okay. So on this swing, which is the like this most recent So this is I, I don't know why I've done it from there, but that's weird. Very weird. Okay, because we're going to look at where the most recent five week swing lower is. And I feel like it's here, but you know, that's too random for me. It's the middle of the, of the you know, it's cherry picking. You either do the most recent swing, which would be this one. Or you do the whole kind of sequence, so which is up here. So clearly, this 38.2 uh, resistance level and these previous highs were too much. When we got up here, we just couldn't get beyond it. So that was where we got stuck. And we couldn't. when you do that, you would look for um, uh, this 236 W support on a pullback and the 200 moving average, and it wasn't. So we're all the way back in a sideways range. I think that, you know, that, we might not retest the lows, you know, there's pretty good support at these daily moving averages, but this was quite a nasty bearish reversal. So the support now comes in, because this is a nasty one, at these daily moving averages, 32, and I would look for, again, a 786, gosh, where is that going to come? Here. There we are, that's exactly where they are. 32. So a little bit lower until we have support in Mithril Bitcoin. 32. Now, if we're looking at Mithril US dollar tether, so that's where we need to see support. Mithril tether. Weekly. So, oh. so this is a... I feel like this is an irregular correction. So here's our first swing lower, and then here's our second swing lower here. So we're going to have a, re a relationship between these two swings. Okay. Oh, and if we keep going lower here, ta one, 1010. So 0 0.01010. And that's where these daily moving averages are as well. I think that we've got a little bit further to fall, unfortunately, still. Let's try. Just this is too much, you know, this. Uh, yeah. You know, this is quite good support here in Mithril. It might turn up higher here, but I can't. This previous high, let's see how we're doing here. What are we doing? Not much. Potentially, in Mithril dollar, we could turn higher from here, but we would only know if we got above 1291, that 1291 and these highs. So, yeah, that was quite a nasty reversal in that one. Okay, good night, everyone. Um, Temedayo, sorry, that's a bit of an ugly chart, isn't it? Okay, bye everyone. <laughs> now, just be careful, right? If this dollar has further to go, just be careful with this silver. Uh, when everybody is convinced, okay, honestly, when everybody is convinced something is uh, going to go up, it makes me nervous. I think it will go up, but I think 32 is a bit of a tough level, you know? And so take some profit when we get there, okay?